Welcome back, vintage Hot Wheels collectors and diecast enthusiasts. You are in the Hot Wheels room with me. Today, we are doing a year-by-year -year video. This is my long-running series that I have been producing, starting back with the 1974 Hot Wheels, going every year, every Hot Wheel ever produced during the main line, or for the main line. So that excludes promotional cars, uh, real riders, anything like that. This is just the cars that you would have found on your pegs for somewhere between 67 cents and $1.20. Uh, depending on the time period, we are looking at collector number 367 through to collector number 407 today. Uh, so that encompasses cars released sometime between 1995 and 1999. Because these cars were not released in sequential order, it's almost impossible to figure out exactly when these cars were released. Uh, and so for the sake of this video, we're not going to try to do that. We're just looking at these cars. So it's not really like a year by year. This is more of a collector series. Uh, at this point in time, in the year 2000, Hot Wheels then started to produce cars in a yearly collector number range. So starting in 2000, they had collector number 1 through 240. Typically, the first 30 or 40 cars were the first edition cars or the brand new castings that Hot Wheels had produced for the time period. So that's not so evident here. We do have some first edition cars, including my coveted. 1996 uh, VW Drag Bus, collector number 372. This is a vehicle I actually picked up at a Zeller's store back when I was a much younger man. And I remember being extremely excited for that because it is a hard vehicle to find. Even back then, people were just hoarding Hot Wheels at the time. So to resell them, basically. And really, nothing has changed. These cars, have a lot of these cars are quite valuable now. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about all the different models that were released in this time period or this collector range and going forward through the years. Uh, well, it hopefully won't take me years to do this, but we're going to see all uh, 1,121 cars in this collection before we get on into 2000. So we've got some very rare cars to discuss here, some interesting variations. I certainly don't have every vehicle produced at the time period. There was literally hundreds of cars with all the variations. Some cars had upwards of 10 different variations, whether it be wheel changes, minor tampo changes, paint changes, base changes, lots of different things that we can discuss here. And they are all in my notes, so we will talk about all that stuff. And uh, mainly we're just going to have a good old time reminiscing with some vintage Hot Wheels. I hope you enjoy. And now I have the camera turned around, so we are going to go ahead and look at all of the vehicles you are going to see in this video. Only three of these cars are going to remain in their factory packaging. These are the rarest cars in this set so far that I have already on packaged card. The rest of the cars are on damaged card backs. They're not terribly damaged, but I'm a loose collector. And uh, the way I like to display my cars is loose on the walls in the background, as you can see on those Plano 5324 24 compartment storage cases mounted to the walls. So I just picked up all of these cars from a seller uh, I met on eBay and uh, he's been able to help me fill in a lot of the uh, holes that were in my collection. And as I decided to go through the year by year review video, I really wanted to finish hunting down the cars I could, at least easily enough from one seller. Shipping is an absolute nightmare these days with the uh, global shipping program that eBay in, enlisted several years ago. So for that reason, it's pretty difficult for me in Canada to get all the cars. Uh, luckily, I had plenty already from the years and years that I have been collecting these cars, basically ever since I was a young lad. Some of these cars are actually my toys from back when I was a boy. And so we are actually going to be opening up all of the rest of these cars. Now, I know that that will pain some collectors, and I do apologize but that's, this is just the way I do it. And just in the last uh, two weeks, this is how many cars I've already opened up off camera. So I thought I'd do a little different this time around for those of you that enjoy seeing cars come out of the package to be truly loved. This is what's happening. We've got some really rare cars in here as well. Many of these cars I've paid upwards of $20 for each. It has become quite an expensive collection to fulfill. But uh, this is a lifelong collection for me. I don't expect I will ever sell these. And uh, when I do, I will be a very, very old man, I'm sure. Because this is my passion. This is my hobby. And I absolutely love sharing them with you guys. Especially when they are loose. Because we can really see all the awesome details. 
and we're just panning over several of these cars. I've got them all in sequential order, and I do not have all the variations as I had made note of, but I have quite a few interesting variations, and we're going to talk about all of the variations possible, which ones were worth the most, and I should make note, I don't have any treasure hunts from this year period. A uh, complete set of 12 treasure hunt cars from 1996 would run over a thousand dollars so that's why i don't have them um i just can't allocate that kind of money to 12 cars at this point there's just so many other ones to collect and really they're just they're just so cool to see them all here and the more the merrier in my opinion so we have a lot of variations we're gonna get straight into it i'm going to go through all these cars in order and as we uh as we go through that we're going to open up cars along the way to fill in this parking grid of vintage Hot Wheels. Now the last video series I did just before this video was collector number 322 to 352. So that was 30 different collector numbers with multiple variations. And at the same time that I was filling in the blanks on this next video, that the one that we're looking at today, I did pick up a few extra vehicles that I didn't review in the last series. So I just thought I'd make mention of them. One of them was this uh, Big Chill, number 352. Uh, it's a very rare vehicle at the time, and uh, the reason why this one is so rare is it has the hot pink skis on it, whereas the other three all had orange skis. So that one is coming out of the package. It did cost me about 15 bucks, and uh, I just really wanted to display on the wall, as with all the other ones. So here we can do a side-by-side. -side. Just to bring you up to date, you can see the difference in the ski color. This was the rarest variation. Now, a lot of the pricing I have might be slightly out of date because I have purchased a lot of these cars a long time ago. So I'm really going to just do my best to kind of describe which ones are the rarest. Uh, another one that was not in my collection in the last video was the 1995 model series Power Pistons, collector number 347. It also went by the name Power Rocket. So a bit of confusion there for collectors at the time. It would have been extremely difficult to figure out what was what back in the day. This is a Canadian international release only with the gold seven spokes, cost me $20. And this seven spoke chrome version also cost me $20. We're going to get both those open up because I didn't have either of these vehicles in my collection. And there certainly were more variations. There was seven in total to collect. Um, some of them have very common wheels like the three spoke, uh, five spoke. But this is a really cool car, very fast on the racetrack. It's got a metal silver painted base. And on this one, you can see it's just metal. So both these getting opened up. It was 79 cents back in the day. So that is quite uh, an increase in value over the years. Now, a lot of collectors will note that these cars only have that kind of value when still on the card back. But honestly, with the way that people can open card backs these days and reseal them, make modifications to them, it really, I don't find that it should have an, a lot of value assigned to the packaging. The main thing you want to look for is that the axles, in this case, have not been changed. So you want to see those round center head uh, axles that hold the wheels on. You obviously want to check for drilled rivets. And so all these cars are original. And I know in my collection, I don't collect cars that are customized for display on the wall. So these are all authentic cars. That's two power pistons coming out of the package. The final one, I had made mention in the last video that I was possibly going to be opening it. It was the Ferrari 355, collector number 350. It doesn't actually say on this package. This, I believe, is also a Canadian exclusive. It's got the gold seven spokes. It may have been released in the United States. However, this package does have the international English and French, which tells me that it was definitely a Canadian car. Quite a rare car with this Tampo because all the other ones didn't have the Tampo on it with the Ferrari and that black stripe. Uh, damaged card, of course, so it's coming out of the package as I had intended so I could put it on the wall with the uh, numerous other Ferraris. There were 10 variations of which I now have six. So anyways, these are from the last video. Now we're moving on into the current video. And the first car we're going to look at is, of course, number 367. That's this uh, first edition, so that means it's a brand new casting, Chevy pickup truck, and this was the Chevy 1500. It did come in uh, four variations, of which I have three, 
really the most notable. So we've got several wheel variations here. You can see we've got the five spoke. We've got the uh, large black seven spoke with the Goodyear tires on it. And then we've got the small black seven spoke with the Goodyear tires. So that's three variations there. And the rarest one was the all large wheel black seven spoke. This, according to old price guides, would be worth around $20 in the package in mint condition. Um, I don't really know what they're worth nowadays. I mean, I think they're probably very hard to find. So it's really a supply and demand sort of situation. But a really nice set of trucks. Uh, plastic body on these. And uh, one's got a clear window, as you can see. The five spokes got a clear window. The other two have the tinted window and blacked out grille. So a lot of different variations in addition to the wheels on these awesome racing trucks. Just before we move on to the Sizzler, the fourth variation I don't have would be this five spoke with a silver painted base. That's also quite a rare truck, similar in rarity to the all large wheel seven spoke. Now on to the Sizzler. Uh, this Hot Wheels car is a fictional car. Clearly it's got a plastic body. I'm not sure if it should have had a window over that cockpit or not. This is not a brand new casting, uh, as in it's not a mint blister pull, so it may have a little bit of damage. I don't think it has a cockpit normally for that, but I'm not quite sure. Otherwise, it's in great condition. Um, not an overly valuable car, and there was four variations of this in total. Five spoke being this one. There was also a five dot. That's really rare, $15 approximately. Uh, silver painted base with five spoke, about $10.00. And then a gray engine version. So this one has a chrome engine. I guess there was one with a gray plastic engine. It's not a casting I'm actively hunting any more of. If I find them for cheap, uh, you know, I'll certainly pick them up to complete the collection. And I will leave spaces in the storage containment walls in the museum for that car, should I find them, as I usually do. But again, not an overly desirable casting, in my opinion. Neither is the Rail Rodder. I mean, I like it. I get it. It's a pretty cool vehicle, but I'm more of a car collector, and this is going really heavy on the fictional sort of side of things. It's clearly an old steam locomotive that has been souped up by Hot Wheels, and it is quite cool. It's got these, these little mini wheels on the front, and it's got, I think, five spokes hiding under those back chrome wheel covers. Metal base with chrome plastic around it. It's quite a light casting, mostly plastic. Still roller, and this one is not a blister pull either, so it's got a bit of wear. Uh, I'm not sure where I got it. Probably in a loose lot. Um, the Rail Rodder, or, yeah, is that the Rail Rodder? So that's number collector number 370. So this was 369. There was no collector number 368. Often in this weird uh, line of Hot Wheels at this time period, there was missing cars that didn't actually have a collector number. There just was no car. So you're going to see this um, quite often. And if I can try to remember to name each collector number as we go, that'll help out a little bit. But there was no 368. So we went from 367 to 369. 370, the Rail Rodder. Uh, four variations. All wheel variations. Well, one had a gray engine. That would be worth about $10 as well. So I guess there was some unpainted uh, parts going around for both those cars. Moving on to the Road Rocket, collector number 371. Three variations in total. Let's see if we can get a focus. This is an international Canadian release only. Once again, the gold seven spokes did not seem to be found on the American release cars. And this one has the unpainted base. Check out those little fans on the bottom too. That is really cool. It's got a lifting uh, canopy. Revealing the uh, cockpit and gold engine underneath. It's quite a cool casting. It would be very fast on the racetrack if ever you wanted to dare race one. Um, this one here, number 371, had uh, yeah three variations. So we had the gold seven spoke. This one's apparently worth about 20 bucks. Um, gold BBS wheels. And um, hmm, I don't know what the other one was. I seem to have made a, an error in my notes. Uh, now we're moving on to my absolute favorite, and this one is not coming to the package, so don't worry. It is collector number 372, First Edition's Drag Bus. Clearly the most desirable casting probably in this entire set of vehicles. To this day, worth a lot of money if you can find one. Uh, you've got the original artwork on the back, which is really cool to see. 
And I do keep all the card backs, even for the cards I open, just for basically nostalgia. Extremely heavy casting. I believe it is the heaviest casting ever produced by Hot Wheels. It's all metal other than a chrome plastic engine. This is a drag bus, so it actually the body lifts up. And this is the first edition. This is the most expensive one. I dare even put a price on it. I don't know. You'd have to go on eBay and check out. I have not looked. Uh, also, there was the VW bus. Exact same vehicle. So far as I can tell. Uh, almost the same card art. Still part of the Series 6 of 12. Just does not have that 1996 first edition's um, identifier on the back. And this one is an international card. As you can tell, it has three different languages. I believe English, French, and Spanish. And uh, so it's the less desirable of the two. I'm not sure where this one was found. Either other than international, it may have been released as part of a set of some sort. Uh, I used to have some notes on that, but I've since lost them. And I bought these buses years and years ago. I've probably owned both of these for well over 10 years. They are not coming out of the package because they're just so cool. I wish I could take one of the package, and if I was going to, it would be this one. Um, but I'm just not going to do that because they are very neat as a pair. And there were no other um, variations. So each of those probably worth, I'm going to just ballpark about $60 to $100 each. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to number 373, which is the Street Cleaver. Uh, so, yeah, there was no number 37. Okay, so 373, that's correct. And here it is. It's like a souped-up road plow, huge chrome engine, very fictional. Five-spoke wheels. We've got the flame tampos on it. It's got a plastic body and a metal base. And there was a lot of variations of the Street Cleaver. There were nine variations, of which I only had one previously to this week when I then went ahead and purchased a huge quantity of street cleavers, five to be exact. And so we're going to look at all of those right now. The cards on these are not bad, but they're not great either. And these are not overly valuable cars. I mean, I did pay about $5 to $10 per car. I don't know that they're actually worth that, but I mean, to get them all from one seller so I can make this video for you guys, I just went ahead and sprung on it. So we've got multiple uh, multiple different wheel variations. We've got the five spoke, this one having no uh, flames on it. And then we've got the white five dot wheels. We've got the chrome five dot wheels. We've got the snow blade wheels on this one. Those kind of interesting spun wheels and then we've got the three spoke now this one actually has the flameage on it just like the five spoke that i already had loose and so we're going to get all these opened up and what can i tell you about these well i don't think they're worth that much money they're pretty easy to come by you know to get them all can be a bit bit of work some of them have extra packaging to protect the vehicle and thankfully for that, because here it is, 25 years later, all these little street cleavers getting ripped right out of the packaging. It's kind of fun, honestly, guys. I mean, the packaging is pretty poached on most of them. And if I keep them in the package, well, they end up in a cardboard box somewhere, and I never see them because I just don't have the wall space to hang all these carded cars, especially with the premium collection of Hot Wheels that I have that I do keep in the card backs, like car culture, pop culture, all that stuff. I mean, I usually buy duplicates nowadays, but these are just essentially $1 vehicles back in the day. And just check out that assortment of street cleavers. So that was number 373. Yeah, nothing here worth more than $10, essentially. So from there, let's move on to number 374. This was a first edition as well. So these are new castings for 1996. And that is the Radio Flyer. It's a really cool... A uh, rendition of a radio flyer wagon that you would pull as a child or pull with your child in it. And it's all souped up. It's all metal other than the chrome plastic engine and the black seat and steering column. I've got two variations here. I've got the five spoke and I've got a black wall, which I think absolutely looks awesome. There weren't many black wall cars being released by this era. They really were starting to phase out the black wall wheels, which was unfortunate and I think Hot Wheels realized their error and later on brought the black walls back uh, for a premium line of cars. 
in the 2000s and now you know you can still find them sometimes not on mainline vehicles the number 374 uh, radio flyer had five variations so i have two there were base variations as well so some of them had silver painted bases and uh, those would be worth more 15 dollars. then there were some with just a country base change so i think this one was made in malaysia no china so you had malaysia china india i believe i'm not 100 percent sure on india but there's a malaysia and a china base so there was just like country bases one has a gray engine with five spokes and uh i don't know what that would be. Oh, it'd be worth about 15 bucks so that's probably one of the rarer ones uh, i haven't seen one in a while so maybe it's worth more than that now okay so i've just made some room here the parking area is filling up but now we are going to look at the twang thing that is collector number 376 uh, of which there were no other variations other than this one so this is the only one very very uncommon actually for the year period not to have wheel variations but the twang thing as you can see has two electric guitars on either side it's very cool uh would be great on the racetrack it does have a plastic base and a metal body a lot of plastic on it but super cool and not a casting that we've seen very often again um, these are not worth that much uh, with the five spoke wheels on it they're only really worth about two bucks maybe three dollars if you're lucky i don't know maybe you can maybe you'd have to pay more to find one specifically but really it was a very common car not so for the ferrari f50 this is a casting of course that ferrari people have gone nuts for um i believe ferrari dropped the license with hot wheels for a number of years making Ferraris extraordinarily expensive, especially all the different castings. And this one being a very stock-looking, uh, authentic red paint job on a very nicely proportioned casting of this extremely rare supercar uh, made it quite rare. This one is made in India. The other variations uh, had a Malaysia base or a China base. They would all be the same value roughly as this india based car which really shouldn't have been very much but nowadays i would expect these cars to be worth at least 10 to 20 dollars um the hardest one to find would be an all small wheel so these are small wheels seven spoke that one is going to set you back probably 50 bucks nowadays okay so we're going to move on to the 96 mustang this is collector number 378. I have four of the five variations. However, I've noted variations that don't exist in a lot of price guides. That being the paint. So you've got this kind of metallic uh, auburn sort of colored paint. And you can clearly see one is much darker than the other. You've got the five spoke. You've got a three spoke. And you've got a five dot five dot wheel and we've got the bbs wheels so those are the basket style wheels same as on the ferrari uh, f50 and we've got two different oh my goodness two different paint variations on each of these cars and now looks like i actually have all five now so i, I do have all five so i just bought this uh snow blade version again another damaged card uh it's pretty rough i mean it's not water soaked or anything but i'm going to try to stop talking about why i'm opening these cars for you guys but i know a lot of people are going to probably give me a little bit of uh a little bit of flack on opening these cars but as i've already mentioned this is this is why so we have all five beautiful renditions of that 96 mustang um really these cars shouldn't be worth more than about 20 dollars each um the all small, there is one I'm missing actually. So I guess there's six variations. Yeah, the seven spoke Mustang is worth the most. I don't have that one. So seven spoke wheels on that one would be the rarest and probably worth about 30 to $40. It's amazing to think that these $1 cars have gone up this much in value, but this is the truth. Now on to collector number 380. There was no collector number 379. So we're going from 378 to 380. That is the Dodge Ram pickup truck, of which I have three variations. There were four in total to collect, and let's uh, let's talk about those now. 
So interestingly, for the four variations released this uh, year for this Dodge Ram, we had a completely different paint variation, similar tampos, of course, different colors. That gray with five spokes was unique. And these are worth quite a bit of money nowadays, probably around $20 to $25 a car, mint on packaging. We've also got the uh, black seven spokes with the Goodyear tires, same as we saw on that Chevy 1500. Just from a little back, same kind of race series. Uh, collector number 380 here. One of these variations I'm missing doesn't have the lettering on the tires and no hood tampo. So that would be worth somewhere in the same range, probably $20 to $30. I haven't found that one yet, although I have not been actively looking for it for very long. These are just really nice, uh, a nice generation of Dodge Ram truck. And they look great in this red paint job with the red interior, red plastic base. And now I do need to back up slightly because I missed one car. That was the 375 1996 first edition Dogfighter. As you can see, different packaging all the way around. Fairly roached patch packaging on these ones. And, you know, had I bought this back in the day, I don't think it would be worth all that much. And to this day, I don't think they are worth that much. But there are a lot of variations to make note of. Four in total, of which I have three. Um, which one am I missing? I'm missing, I believe, a five-spoke with gray. Or, no, sorry, with chrome. You can see that the, some of these have a chrome chassis. Others have a gray plastic chassis. So we're going to open up all of these vehicles and uh, add them to the lineup. I'm trying not to go out of order here, but there's just so many cars to look at. It's kind of... Uh, kind of tough sometimes there's a lot of cars so i'm trying to get as many vehicles reviewed at one time so that we can get through this series because obviously i've still got 25 years of hot wheels to review with you guys and as a avid collector of these cars to this day i still have a com very complete collection of cars going forwards although i don't buy many fictitious cars fictional kind of fantasy cars as hot wheels calls it um, anymore there's just too many cars so you can see we've got that kind of burgundy paint change that we saw on the 96 mustangs as well and uh, there it is with the gray engine so these really not worth more than five to ten dollars i'm going to put those in where they need to go and then we're going to look at number 382 i don't have 381 that was a kenworth t600 one variation only it was silver, and I don't have any. There's only one variation, so I am hunting that one. Uh, maybe it's somewhere in my collection in the package. I just can't find it right now. So we're going to move on to number 382, which is the 56 Flash Cider. This truck here had three variations, of which I have all three. So we're going to get to see all three. And here they are presently. As you can see, we've got some wheel variations. We've got the seven spoke without the uh, lettering on it. We've got those Goodyear tires. And there is a small variation between these two. Very almost imperceptible, but this one has the Hot Wheel logo on the door, whereas this one does not. I think that is the only difference between these two 56 flash siders. So that one's coming out of the package as well, of course. And uh, pretty cool track set up there. Yeah, remove the letters on the wheels. And uh, so nice, nice collection of trucks. These are also part of that racing truck series that we've just looked at with the Dodge Ram and the Chevy 1500. These ones have the opaque chrome plastic windows. So there's no interior in these trucks, but they are quite heavy. And uh, a very nice looking set of trucks. Worth approximately $15 to $20 per vehicle at this point in time. And we've got a lot of vehicles left to look at, including one more race truck. Check it out. It's the Nissan Hardbody. We'll get to that in just one second. Well, actually, that is the very next truck that we're looking at. I seem to have these slightly out of order because I did have these Dodge Daytonas to look at next. But we're going to finish off the race series trucks with that Nissan Hardbody. Um, three variations to make note of. One of my favorite castings of all time. I just remember loving this truck. A lot when I was a younger person and I still do um, very cool metallic blue paint the other three variations of this truck 
included the all large wheel with the black construction tire so they would not have the chrome rims and um i'm just looking at my notes they're so disorganized here sometimes uh we've got the chrome front end that would be worth well over 150 dollars if you could find this truck with a chrome front grille and chrome roll bar very rare vehicle to find so not likely i'm going to find that at this point uh, this one is the least uh, rare, I would say, the most common. And uh, so there, that's the difference. You've got the three. So you've got the black construction tire worth a little bit more than this one. And then you've got the chrome front end on that truck, which I don't have. So we're going to move on to the 57 T-Bird. That's number 384. Where the heck do these Dodge Daytonas go? It seems I've uh, missed my notes on the Dodge Daytona, so I'm just going to go ahead and review this. I actually can't remember which collector number it is, uh, so it's somewhere in between. Multiple variations, of course. We've got the seven-spoke uh, gold rims. We've got the gold BBS wheels. Just a really nice casting. Um, unfortunately, guys, I don't have my notes on this car. I know that there was multiple variations with different chrome wheel options. No paint variations. But that's a hard car to find these days. It's probably worth about $10 to $15. We're going to move on into the Flame series of cars. Flame Thrower series, actually. I did just pick this one up because I only had one of these. And there are six variations. Mostly to do with uh, base variations, but some paint variations, as you can see here. We've got the pinkish flame versus the more gold flame. And uh, there may have even been different flame drops. You see how there's the flames. We're going to talk about that more as we get into the hydroplane casting, which I do have two of way over there. One of them being, uh, it's going to stay in the package because it's so rare. And so here we have the T-Bird. 57 T-Bird, quite a popular casting. Back in the day, it was released a lot. And maybe now you can see even more just the difference between these two cars. So those are worth about uh, $10 each. Sometimes you can pick them up for less, $5 for the more common. Uh, I think the pink flame version is the harder one to find. Moving on into the flame thrower series, we do have the hydroplane that I aforementioned. This is a watercraft. And here we have uh, two of the four variations um so there was base variations. some of them have china on the base some have malaysia this one's a malaysia that one's a malaysia so i'm missing the china base versions but as you can see this flamethrower has the flame drops pointed backwards so all the flames should have been going the other way this is probably some sort of error a printing error and it's worth about 30 dollars apparently i didn't pay that for this one though i only paid about 15 bucks for this one um, all the same, it's on a nice card back. doesn't have too much damage, so I'm going to hold that one in the package. Uh, the only one other than the two drag buses getting kept in the package. This is the common version, which you should be able to pick up for just a couple dollars, really. It's on a good card. Um, but I don't have one of these on my wall, so I'm going to open it up so I can fill one of those spaces. And it does have the... Uh, chrome engine with the hot wheels logo embossed on it and it's got those mini wheels on the base of it for rolling now it's not an exceptional roller it rolls more like a green light but either way it's pretty cool so we're going to put that one in next to the uh, 57 t-bird and then we're on to Another vehicle in this set, that's the Range Rover. There was two variations of this truck as well. Um, the logo, a logo change on it. I, I believe it had a Hot Wheels logo or no Hot Wheels logo on the back bumper. You can see it's just got that purple little Hot Wheel logo. So really not worth that much between five, probably about $5 really. Uh, fairly common truck, but super cool. That chrome plastic Malaysia base and just a really iconic casting. And finishing off the Flamethrower series, we've got the Oshkosh Snowplow. Now, this is my original toy from when I was a child. It has that removable plow on the front. And then it just clips back in place. Also, a very heavy casting. And it does have a plastic top. This truck dates back to, I think, 1984. 
um, back when it was released as a, uh, yeah, 1984 as an extras truck in all metal orange with the same base. So here are the two variations. Oh, I just lost the plow. We've got the black centered construction tires and these dark chrome construction tires. Um, those are both variations and they shouldn't run you more than about $10. It's quite a popular casting. Uh, pretty easy to find, but definitely one that you're going to want to have in your collection. It's just very cool. So now we're going to move on to the Space Series. I didn't have very many vehicles from this set in my uh, current collection until I picked up some more. Uh, pretty much because they're all fantasy vehicles, so that's probably why I didn't buy them back when they were new. Um, I did have one, which was the Alien. So I have the Alien here. We'll start with that. Um, well, we shouldn't start with that because that's not the next sequential car. So the first sequential car is number 388. That's the... Uh, which one is this? The rate, um, hmm. Radar Ranger. Doesn't actually say that on it. Radar dish rotates. Advanced communication. Oh, yes, it does. Right there. Um, interesting. I also have these tracks somewhere. Should definitely get some track videos. Oh, copyright 1995. So, we're going to open that one up. That's a new casting for 1995. And there it is with the rotating chrome radar dish six giant construction tires on it it's actually quite a cool casting now that i have opened it up i can truly appreciate it and well these are kind of a door i gotta go back and shift over but we're gonna just go through the space series here and the next one is the gm lean machine right there so this is a concept vehicle by gm one of the first kind of electric vehicles, I believe, way back then. Tinted canopy, it says, with an exclamation point. And the same track sort of set up on the back. Um, there was three variations of this. So you would have the unpainted taillight variation. This one has the painted taillights. That's the hardest one to find. And I'm not sure what the other variation was. Perhaps it was a silver painted base. Hot Wheels Space Administration, HWSA. Looks like the window needs a bit of a polish. It's basically almost opaque. You can't see through it. That brings us to the Alien, number 390. So the last one was 391. And again, we've got that matching Hot Wheels Space Association uh, livery on the front. Fairly opaque window. Two variations. Um... One with a Hot Wheel logo on the back. This one does not have it. Oh, yes, it does. It's right there. So maybe I have the one that doesn't have the Hot Wheel logo. So very minor variations. Not something I'm going to be actively looking for. This one is not mint. Uh, it's in really good condition. It doesn't have any chips, but you can tell it's been played with that plastic window. It has a few scuffs on it. And the final vehicle in this four-car set. So as you can probably tell, since we went through the Flame series... We've got four vehicle sets starting here in the 1996, 1995 year. We've got four flame vehicles. We had four race trucks. We've got four space series vehicles. And that's going to continue into the next rest of the vehicles. And I will make note of that going forwards. Um, but we've got the Treditor here. I've got two of the four variations. One would have been uh, silver with um, logo changes and... I don't really think these are worth that much. The hardest one to find is this white pearl variation. The other ones have all been this kind of blue pearl look. And as you can see, the blister is just sun damaged beyond collectability in its current state. So there it is. Uh, again, the HWSA logos on it. You got that blue chrome engine and canopy, exhaust pipes. It's a very plasticky thing with a lot of little miniature wheels. And uh, so here we have the chrome blue version. And it is pretty cool. I mean, I, I think they're pretty cool now. But I'm looking at them, especially because of the nostalgia factor of these old Hot Wheels. Looks like something out of like an alien movie. Aliens. So very cool. Nice to see them both there. And we're going to move on into the Race Team Series 2. So this next four vehicle set is called Race Team Series 2. And luckily I'd already collected all of these from way back in the day because they are pretty hard to find. First up is the ramp truck with three variations. 
uh, that I know of. I've got the five spoke. There was a seven spoke as well. I'm not really sure what the other variation was, but it's got this tipping ramp feature. So you can park your cars on it and then it clips back down. Very heavy casting, highly desirable. I believe this is a Kenworth. I'm not really 100% sure on that, but you can see that you can park other race team cars on it. So that's a really cool casting. Uh, not one they produced anymore, to my knowledge. Next up, we've got number 393. So that was 392. Now we've got 393, the Baja Bug. Another super cool casting that used to be produced a lot for the main line. It's all metal. Have not seen this one in years now in the main line. And uh, this one would be worth also about $5 to $10. Uh, these could be outdated prices though, because I haven't actually shopped for these vehicles, having not needed to. Number 394 is the 57 Chevy with uh, VJ. V VJ? Is that, who's that? V-I-J-A-Y. I'm not sure who that is. It must be a race car driver for the Hot Wheels team. Uh, beautiful, beautiful pearl blue, chrome plastic base. And uh, just a super cool looking car. Shouldn't be worth more than about $5, $10. I mean, this series is pretty easy to collect. Probably the hardest one to get is going to be the Byway Man, number 395. Um, this one had two variations. I don't have the tri-blade wheel variation. That's the one I'm missing. That one's worth the most at about $15 to $20. This one should set you back about $10. And we've got another name on the door, A-Run, Aaron. I don't know. Must be race car drivers. I don't know enough about that stuff. They all have different names in the door, it looks like. Nithia. Who's on the race truck? Didn't even see that. Nobody on the race truck. Not for hire, though. Number one for racing. Probably one of my favorite series in this whole set next to the racing trucks. I really like those racing trucks. But this next set is also really cool. It's called the Mod Rod series. And it starts with the Hummer, which I didn't have loose in my collection. 89 cents at a store called Venture. Uh, groovy graphics. Very groovy graphics, indeed. That's the theme for this Mod Rod series. All four in that set. Number 396. Interesting, they had these collector tips on the top of the cards, too. Hot stuff. Flame decoration is a popular theme on many models. 75 Street Rider model with flames on the sides worth over 40 times its original value. Well, I can say that just about every Hot Wheel now. Very, very hard to find these old cars in good shape, and you certainly not find them at yard sales anymore, going on 25 years old. Most of them have, you know, if they're not mint in the package like this, they're probably in a sandbox somewhere. Well, it's got this groovy pearl metallic metal base. It's very light casting, though. All plastic. And uh, love and peace on the back. with The peace symbols and flowers everywhere. Flower power. So that was number 396. Number 39. And there's no other variations. Of, oh, yes, there was. Uh, two variations. So I'm missing the tri-blade wheel variation of this one as well. The most expensive. So worth about $25. And we've got the school bus. That's the only uh, version of this vehicle in this lineup. So again, you got those groovy graphics, uh, peace and love on the roof, some little green hearts, seven spoke wheels and a yellow plastic base. And probably the harder, one of the harder ones to find is number 398, the VW Bug. Uh, no other variations of this one exist either. And it certainly has some very uh, cool spacey kind of paint versions on it with stars and the moon and some circle dots and explosion of butterflies on the door the seven spoke wheels very cool green interior all metal the absolute uh hardest car to find in this set though is the 67 camaro number collector number 399 this one has the opening base so one of the most popular hot wheel castings of all time uh and also it was the treasure hunt of the time i believe it was white a white, uh, all pearl white version, which can sell for over $200 by itself. This version here, I've typically noticed that they're worth about $10 to $30, depending on the variations. So we do have uh, four variations here. That's all four known variations. And I'm going to have to go through them with you guys, because on the surface of things, they look basically all the same. They've all got five spoke wheels. The difference, of course, being we've got window variations so this one has a clear window that one has a clear window painted engine so you got a silver painted engine this one's got some green overspray on it, but it's silver painted engine whereas this one's just bare metal and then we've got the tinted window variation 
with the silver painted engine and another one here clear window variation with that frosted gray kind of matte non-shiny metal engine as you can see the difference these were blister pulls so these were actual variations of the time very cool cars and uh, those go back you know that casting has been around for a long time i think the hardest one to find here is going to be well, let's not drop any is going to be this tinted window variation it has a hot wheels logo on the rear window and uh that one i believe sent me back about 40 or 50 dollars years ago when i bought these cars i have not been able to find any of these other more rare variations commonly five spoke clear window uh unpainted engine i do believe um but the all oh i am missing one i'm missing the all small wheel seven spoke so that one's worth the most um that'd be worth probably nearing a hundred dollars these days crazy prices on these cars when you think back in the day so i have two four vehicle sets left to share with you uh dark rider series and sports car series here's the dark rider series it had a metallic black theme overall and mostly not entirely however We've got Big Chill coming out here at collector number 400 once again. Uh, two variations. So we've got the all black kind of metallic. And then we've got this silvery look one with orange skis, interestingly. Um, these are not worth a lot of money. Probably about $5 each. Ooh, this one's going to be stubborn, as you can see. Oh, I hate it when they open like that. That is the worst. All right, so I've just used a pen to open this up. It's just, it really didn't want to come out of the package here. This is probably the absolute worst opening possible. But we got it. And there it is. The uh, Silver Dark Chill. Or Big Chill. <laughs> from the Dark Rider series. So, not doesn't overly pay me to open these cars. Because they are pretty common. And the next one in that series was the Street Beast. This used to be one of my favorite castings as a child as well. It's a fictional kind of fantasy 50s turbine grilled car. Uh, first released in the blue card series back in the early 90s. Yeah, like 1991, all white with aqua green. And anyways, this one's dark metallic black in fitting with the series. All metal base. No other variations. Worth about five bucks. Then we've got the Thunderstreak. No variations on this one either. It's got the chrome kind of plasticky dark chrome base dark metallic black metal body and a black enamel base seven spoke wheels camera's having a little bit of trouble with these ones uh power pistons so here we have another version of the power pistons i think this is only the second release since that first one that we looked at at the start of the video this is that dark chrome and i should mention this one has an opening canopy which can be lost pretty easily as you can see it's minimal minimal holding uh plastic holding it on there it's the first time probably open it in years as this is my original car from when i was a child that's the condition that i've kept it in all these years i never raced it on any racing tracks and certainly it was one of my favorite cars actually just really like the lines on it um although it is a fantasy car it kind of looks like a racing car of some kind maybe it's based on something i don't know let me know in the comments if you know Final series is the sports car series, number 404 through 407. That was number 403. So we're missing, no, we're not missing any. 403 to 404, that's the Porsche 930. Home run, probably one of the worst paint jobs ever on this car. Uh, I just don't, I don't really get the sports series. I mean, it was kind of, I, I don't know, just didn't really like it a lot with all the graphics on these cars. Really nice cars in the set, however, seven spoke. No variations on any of these Porsches, so not worth a lot. Maybe 3 to $5. All metal, however. Custom Corvette had five variations, mind you. Um, I have the seven-spoke. There was an all-small-wheel five-spoke version. Worth about $50, apparently, so it must be really hard to find. All-small-wheel seven-spoke. So this one has the large back wheels and the smaller front wheels. So if it was all-small, it would be also quite rare, maybe $30. And uh, as it is, this one's pretty easy to come by. It's probably the most common car. It's got like this football theme going on it. Kind of cool. Nice metallic purple paint. Then the 406, collector number 406, the uh, Shelby Cobra 427. 
Uh, two variations. I'm I've got the all small wheel seven spoke, but there was also a white wall seven spoke apparently, which would be quite rare. I haven't seen that one. Opening hood, metal engine, and uh, some interesting soccer graphics on this one. The final car that we're looking at in this video is the 59 Caddy, collector number 407, probably the nicest one. Got the slam dunk uh, basketball livery with the flames on it. I really do like the flames a lot. Um, there was two variations. I've got the all small wheel seven spoke. There was also a white wall seven spoke, which would be, get this, worth about $200. That's how rare it is. Now, mind you, with wheel swaps being so easy to do, you really got to be careful. Uh, maybe not so much on this one because those back wheels would require drilling out the rivet to get to them. I think. Anyways, I'm not collecting that one. So that is the video for today in the year-by-year -year videos. A lot of cars, as you can see, we've pretty much doubled the uh, parking field here of vehicles for the wall display. All these cars are going back onto the Plano display walls which as you can see over in the far corner there, that's where I've taken them all down. So we've got like four Plano cases left to fill up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and stick around for more. Of course, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if you like these sort of videos, that is. Leave me a like and a comment. It's always greatly appreciated to read them all. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, I'm always uh, game to hear those and uh, taking video recommendations. Lots of stuff to film yet. So many Hot Wheels left to go. We've got the Matchbox year-by-year -year videos I want to get into, but these videos take a long time to put together, trying to research everything, and then again, getting all the vehicles off the uh, walls, buying them on eBay, and all the rest. It's quite a chore, but it is a lot of fun. So I really hope that that translates into uh, you know some enjoyable viewership for you guys. Apologies for all the cardboard carnage, but that's just the way it goes. Pretty much I have a mint loose collection of Hot Wheels now on my walls that goes back for years. I mean, one of the most expensive cars I ever opened up was a 1974 Winnipeg. There goes the chair. And that was up here. I remember opening that car up for the 74 year by year video. That one sent me back like $300 back in the day. Um, some very cool cars, you know, all through the years. So if you're interested in older Hot Wheels, be sure to check out those older videos because I've covered all of the cars that you see throughout this room on every wall. Every car here has been filmed just about. I mean, I have filled in a few spots here and there, which is why it would be nice to maybe go back and redo some of these videos, especially in 4K. Cars I haven't yet covered are the promotional cars. So that includes uh, basically just things that aren't mainline. We've got these windback cars. We've got the park and plate cars. Although I do have a park and plate video loaded from a long time ago. I didn't have all the park and plates back then. Certainly not some of these rare cars right from uh, Larry Wood's collection himself. Oh, not that one. One of these is from Larry Wood's collection. Nope, not that one either. Anyways, lots of rare cars in here. And we're going to get through all of them. In the course of time if you're after any of these things of course as always happy hunting we'll see you soon